Coming up tonight in our news, two overnight killings bring the 2020 murder count to three. Plus, the chairman of Bahamas Air defends that airline and a new Supreme Court justice sworn in. News is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Jared Higgs, topping news tonight. Two men were murdered in separate incidents last night. These latest killings brought the murder count for the year to three. The grandmother of one of the men spoke with reporters just moments after his body was taken away. Just pray that when he saw a death coming, he asked God to forgive him and he made peace with his soul. Homicide detectives were busy last night investigating the shooting deaths of two men. The second incident took place at around nine when police say a group of men were standing on prison lane Fort Fincastle. That's when a silver Nissan Tita pulled up with the occupants opening fire on the group of men, killing one of them. Sometime around 9.40 p.m. tonight, the police received reports of gunshots in this area, prison lane. Upon arrival to this area, they met a young man who was on the ground with gunshot injuries to his body. The victim's grandmother, Ida Mae Bain, identified him as 21-year-old Keyshawn Fortune, an employee at Odyssey Aviation. We always tell him to avoid the area because recently it was like a disagreement between him and some other of the guys we don't really know who. Other family members, including the man's sisters, weeped openly. The sorrow only deepened as family members got nearer to a long trail of blood where the body fell. The grieving grandmother admitting that her grandson had his challenges. I know he had his faults. He's not perfect. I'm not standing here to say he was perfect. I don't know what it was between him and whoever, but however it is, when death comes to your door, you feel it. When asked to describe her grandson, Bain says he was always respectful to her. To me, he had manners for me. Any misbehavior will be on the outside or what I might have heard about, but he have, I've never seen him to disrespect me. And he could speak from my point of view. I don't be with him. And he is a young man. He have friends. Who is his friends? I really don't know. It was the second killing reported last night. Hours earlier, police were investigating the death of a man who crashes Nissan Cube on John Road off Blue Hill Road. Um, sometime this evening, just shortly after 6 p.m., the police control received a call of a vehicle that was involved in an incident here at John Road and Blue Hill Road. Officers from the mobile division responded along with uh, other units and discovered that uh, there was a body of a young dark male within that a vehicle. EMS suffered from some injuries. According to reports, the man had just dropped a woman off at a residence on Hospital Lane when he was approached by a gunman who shot him before running away. The injured man, who grieving family members identified as Lyndon Humes, was able to drive a short distance away before crashing into a tree. EMS personnel pronounced him dead on scene. The Sunday night deaths of Fortune and Humes bring the 2020 murder count to three. Police Superintendent Joy Bosfield expressing concern over the deadly start to the air. It is a concern. Um, it's something that we never want to happen. But we'd like to say to young persons or young men that if they could resolve some of these instances instead of um, violence. A full analysis is underway concerning management at Bahamas Air to determine what went wrong regarding the missed deadline that resulted in three of its jets being temporarily banned from flying into the United States. The airline's chairman, Tommy Turnquest, today explained that after that analysis is complete, the chips will fall where they may. Kyle Joaquin reports. In our interview, the airline's chairman was quite frank in saying exactly what went wrong, how it went wrong, and exactly how long it will take to fix it. Everybody knew the deadline was coming up, so that's not unacceptable response. Bahamas Air Chairman Tommy Turnquist says there's no excuse for the missed January 1st, 2020 deadline that ultimately resulted in three of Bahamas Air's four jets being banned from flying into the U.S. The FAA put out that notice 10 years ago, but those three Bahamas Air jets still were not equipped with those navigational kits needed. So how exactly did this major blunder happen? 
Tony Quest explains. 2018, the management at Bahamas here, as I am advised, and again, we're still doing a full, we're still doing a full analysis of it, and uh, the chips will fall where they may, uh, based on the results. He said a contract was signed with a supplier in June 2019 to provide the kits one a month from September to November. But here's where things went wrong. Fokka indicated in June that in September they'll provide one kit. In October they'll provide one kit. And in November they'll provide one kit. The best way I can answer your question is I should have been informed in September when they missed that deadline. The airline's chairman admitted that the issue did cause a backup over the weekend. And because of that, Bahamas Air had to enter into a wet lease contract for two round-trip flights to Florida with Miami Air International. He said fortunately, the airline made money from it. Bahamas Air ended up paying Miami Air $42,294 for the two flights and ended up bringing in over $65,000, a profit of over $23,000. However, there is still the concern of the airline losing money with using the jets to fly into the family islands as they are unable to resume flight services into the U.S. until those kits are installed. By his same reasoning, we shouldn't be using them on the Miami-Fort Lauderdale route either. They're only an up and down. Turnquist said one of those jets was scheduled to undergo 75-day maintenance and is in Costa Rica at the moment to have it done. He added that a new supplier has been identified and navigational kits should be ready within the month. This is our slow period. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, when we get into the Easter break, when we get into the summer break, when we get into the Thanksgiving Christmas break, uh, that's, when, that's when we make the bulk of the money. For our news, I'm Kyle Walker. Well, thanks, Kyle. As the world watches mounting tensions between the United States and Iran, Minister of Foreign Affairs Darren Henfield says the Minister administration is monitoring the situation. While he expressed hope that the conflict will de-escalate before it gets any worse, he noted the Bahamas would beef up security if necessary. Jasmine Brown reports. The Foreign Affairs Minister says with tensions continuing to escalate, the Bahamas is keeping a close eye on the U.S. and Iran. We are close strategic partners with the United States of America. Our proximity to America uh, also dictates that we uh, pay close attention to what is going on. Uh, we've seen markets, the oil markets, uh, we've seen the stock markets, um, and, and we we're hoping that this thing de-escalates before it moves any further. Last week, U.S. President Donald Trump ordered an airstrike that killed Iran's top general and other officials near the Baghdad airport. The deaths came after rioters sought to storm the U.S. embassy compound in Baghdad and an American contractor was killed at an Iraqi military base. Government officials in Iran promised to retaliate following the death. But Trump tweeted on Saturday that the U.S. would target 52 Iranian sites if Iran retaliates for the strike, prompting concerns about whether a war was brewing. Acts of the Bahamas supports the deadly U.S. strike. Henfield said this. America's ally. I mean, you know, they took a defensive posture. That's their position. I don't know if it's our place to support or to denounce what they've done. As it relates to the possible need for beefed up security in the Bahamas, Henfield says local law enforcement officials are also remaining vigilant. I've been watching it very closely for the security posture that we have to take. As I indicated, we spoke with the American Embassy, our Commissioner of Police, uh, Commander of the Defense Force. They're talking to them about any, any need to, to beef up security uh, in the interim until this thing cools down. When asked if the average Bahamian should be concerned, Henfield said there should always be concern when conflict is brewing. The minister also insisted Bahamians should remain alert. Still, Henfield said he's hoping for a more amicable resolution. We're hoping that both countries can, can remain calm and, and perhaps a, a third party uh, of good faith can step in and mediate to, to, to cool things a bit. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Attorney Lauren Klein became the newest Supreme Court Justice after he was sworn in during a brief ceremony at Government House this morning. Klein was surrounded by family, friends and senior members of the, of the judiciary as he took the oath of allegiance and judicial oath just after 11 a.m. Klein told reporters his appointment was humbling. I am very deeply honored and humbled to have been appointed as a Justice of the Supreme Court. And I, I look forward to working with the new Chief Justice um, as we try to improve the justice system and the delivery of justice in, in the country. 
Klein, who previously served in the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, holds degrees in journalism and mass communications and law. He was called to the bar in 2001 and has worked in the office of the Attorney General since 2002. In his new role, Klein says he plans on working closely with the Chief Justice in an effort to make the legal system more efficient. The Chief Justice has recently announced a new raft of initiatives to help with that um, process. You do, you do know that one of the major complaints about the judicial system in the country is that uh, the cases are not disposed of um, speedily. And so I think these new initiatives will certainly help in that regard. And these include the introduction of an IT system and new rules which will helpfully allow judges to move the process more rapidly. Still to come. Why the Bahamas is considered a soft target amid the U.S.-Iran crisis. Plus, ORG calls for government to make campaign finance reform a priority. Stay tuned. From TV to phone to fast internet, how can we show appreciation for the 25 years you've been with Rev? To celebrate our 25th birthday, Rev is rewarding 250 lucky customers with $250,000 cash back. Simply switch the trio, upgrade the trio, or pay your bill in full and have your chance to win cash this Christmas. Just call 601-8992 or email us at trio at CableBahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. Welcome back. Bahamas Ambassador to the United States, Sidney Cauley, is recommending that the Bahamas strengthen its borders amid a U.S.-Iran crisis. With millions of visitors traveling to the Bahamas from the U.S. each year, Cauley said the Bahamas is a soft target. Giorgio Bain reports. Bahamas Ambassador to the United States, Sidney Cauley, says while he doesn't think that the Bahamas has anything to worry about, in light of speculations of a possible war, he would recommend that we strengthen our air and sea borders. We are home to over 7 million plus visitors and therefore our security forces at our airports and our seaports uh, and where people gather uh, uh, should be stepped up. Following the death of a top Iranian commander during a U.S. airstrike on a Baghdad airport, Iran has threatened revenge, asserting that the airstrike was a tantamount to starting a war. U.S. President Donald Trump tweeted on Saturday that the U.S. would target 52 Iranian sites if Iran retaliated. The world is watching to see how the U.S.-Iran crisis will play out. Bahamas Ambassador to the United States, Sidney Colley, said the Bahamas is considered a soft target and recommended strengthening its borders. The Bahamas is considered a soft target. Uh, so uh, once we take care of the basics of the seaport and the airport and uh, major places where Bahamians and tourists congregate, we should be fine. Cauley said though Bahamians have no reason to be alarmed, the same cannot be said for the U.S. Nonetheless, Cauley said all the necessary agencies in the Bahamas have been briefed and they are prepared for any eventuality. The section of our government that are tasked with knowing these things, they are properly briefed, they know what's going on, uh, even though they are not publicly saying, uh, and so they, they are in the loop. And if there are concerns, the government departments and agencies will certainly let Bahamians know, so they don't need to be concerned. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgia Bain. Following another promise by the Prime Minister that his government will bring campaign finance reform, the Organization for Responsible Governance is urging government to make it a priority. Bertheny McDermott reports. Remember this? I have five years to put in the campaign finance reform, and I have another five years for you to see it working properly. Two years later, on the sidelines of the New Year's Day John Canoe Parade, Minnis made a similar declaration, this time noting that he has seven years to deliver on this piece of legislation. It's an age-old promise dating back to the 2017 general election. With only two years left in this term, Minnis still did not confirm whether this legislation would be brought by the end of the current term. Meantime, Organization for Responsible Governance Executive Director Matt Albury stressed the importance of campaign finance reform and is urging government to implement this piece of legislation this term. You hear mention of seven years, but nothing is certain. And, and what we understand is that these things need to happen as soon as possible. If they can't, why not? What needs to be in place? What can happen? What can citizens or civil society 
society groups like org or others do to get involved to help move these things forward. Aubrey stressed the importance of campaign finance reform. Campaign finance is also essential because it moves forward these issues of transparency and openness that are really a part of modern democracy. Research has shown that campaign finance laws can not only help to build uh, a fair and diverse election. Last week, Attorney General Carl Bethel told the Nassau Guardian the Minnes administration hopes to enact the legislation ahead of the 2022 general election. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Still to come, could junk and results change? Find out after this. From TV to phone to fast internet, how can we show appreciation for the 25 years you've been with Rev? To celebrate our 25th birthday, Rev is rewarding 250 lucky customers with $250,000 cash back. Simply switch to Trio, upgrade to Trio, or pay your bill in full and have your chance to win cash this Christmas. Just call 601-8992 or email us at trio at CableBahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. An independent review committee will hold hearings this week to determine whether results for the 2019 Boxing Day and 2020 New Year's Day Junk New Parades will be changed. This after the unofficial results were protested, according to Junk New Corporation of New Providence Chairman Dion Miller, who said groups will have their chance to state their case tonight. Most definitely, as is every uh, um, protest, people protest uh, and any amount of things from could be points, um, penalties, and all effects you're standing. So during this process, anything could anything could happen. Yeah, so I can confirm that there are protests for both parades. I can't go into what exactly groups protest, but I can confirm that groups have protests um, both um, Boxing Day and the New Year's Day parade results. The Valley Boys emerged victorious on Boxing Day while the Shell Saxon Superstars won the New Year's Day Parade. The committee's hearings will take place tonight for the Boxing Day Parade and tomorrow for the New Year's Day Parade. They can protest anything they feel like protesting. Um, tonight, starting tonight, they will sit before the IRC committee. It's a seven-man independent review committee. Um, they will read off their, their grievances, after which the IRC will go to them. Um, they will deliberate and make a final determination. And we anticipate that by January 15th, all grievances, all protests will be resolved and the parades will be made official. <laughs> 